We start with a point. Hi, it's Rob Bryanton, and uh, this is the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. Today's entry is called Evolution's Fast Lane. And we're looking at a picture here from the National Geographic website uh, uh, attached to a uh, missing link picture that uh, was uh, posted and generated quite a lot of comment uh, for the magazine. Uh, this is a fossil discovery of a Darwinius massillae, a 47 million year old lemur-like skeleton with primate-like characteristics. The term missing link is often mistakenly used to describe some kind of half-man, half-monkey, as if humans had evolved from apes. This fossil shows a much clearer indication of what a missing link really is. Apes evolved from a creature like this one, and humans evolved from this same creature. This would be the common ancestor that we both share. With my last blog entry, The Stream, and with the previous entry to that, we talked about the rising paradigm of Web 3.0, where not only will data be coming at us faster and faster, but the web itself will start to wake up, connecting and filtering that deluge of information in ways that allow us to use it all more effectively. No question, these are exciting times. And I've talked about the feeling of rapidly accelerating change that appears to be moving us all to a new mode of existence from a number of perspectives. Some of these past blogs include Google and the group mind, the past is an illusion, and randomness and the missing 96%. Uh, we're going to give you a link to an article from Science Daily that was published well over a year ago. And isn't that just a bit strange in this hurry up world of instantly updated communication? I now feel tempted to apologize to you because this link is a year old. It's not something that's completely fresh and new. This article talks about the work of a team of anthropologists studying the human genome who say that they have evidence that during the past 5,000 years, human beings have been evolving 100 times faster than at any other time in the history of the human race. This flies in direct contrast to the common wisdom that we as a species have not changed much at all in the last 100,000 years. What would have caused us to change so much? There are many factors listed in their article but all of them can be connected to how the way we live now is substantially different from our ancestors 100 or 200 generations ago. The tiny incremental changes over tens of millions of years that moved us from Darwinius Massillae to Homo sapiens are now, according to this study, moving at a much faster pace since the first versions of modern civilization began to rise. Disease factors, diet, competition, all of those natural selection processes operate differently when humans are grouped together in larger and larger numbers. But I think we should also not overlook the mental factors that have changed, as the rise of civilization has gradually modified the way we interact with each other and the ways we think about ourselves. I would say this is easily connected to the science of epigenetics, which shows that not just changes in diet or lifestyle, but changes in mental attitude can actually change the way genes are expressed. I've talked about this in entries like Changing Your Genes, Changing Your Genes Part 2, You Have a Shape and a Trajectory, and The Musician. The fact that humans are changing so much ties very nicely to the general theme of accelerated change that we see in our increasingly expanding universe, in our genome, and in our technology. Are we on the verge of some kind of tipping point? More and more people seem to think that is exactly where we're headed. Uh, I'd like to remind you about a video where we've talked about a very related topic to this. It was called Google in the Group Mind, and uh, we'll put up a link for that one. That's all for this time around. Our next blog is going to be called Does the Multiverse Really Exist? That's all for now. From Imagining the Tenth Dimension, I'm Rob Bryanton. Enjoy the journey.